Well, hey there, it's Scott with New Portrait Biz, and what I want to do today is show you another example of how I created an image like this. Now, this one here is related to Valentine's Day because that's our next holiday, but depending on when you're watching this, the uh, procedure is going to pretty much be the same for uh, any image that you're going to create using a digital background, digital prop, and cutting out a, a subject. So what, I'm, what I want to do here is show you uh, how I actually created this image uh, and all of the components. This here is the components uh, of the set. Okay, we've got this Actually, it's a real booth, but what we did is we made it digital so we can turn it on and off. And then we just have a standard background. And this one here obviously goes with this theme with some candy jars. So we have those two together. We're calling this one Candy Kisses because kissing booth, right? Candy Kisses, get it? <laughs> okay, a uh, little humor there. So here is the image that we're gonna use of the little girl shot on a white background. And then uh, this is the final image that we're going to go after. So I'm going to go through this kind of quick, but really I'm going to show you one technique that's real easy in creating these extractions, especially if you do them on a white background. So let me just separate this so you can see these are two different images. And then this is going to be our working image that we're going to be putting this particular image into. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is extract this image. And I'm gonna show you, like I said, one way, but you could do this multiple ways. And the reason why I like using this way that I'm gonna show you is because I have a lot of control to be able to clean up the edges if I need to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go in here to the Magic Wand tool, and I'm gonna put the tolerance at 20 right now, and that's gonna depend on if this is more dingy white, more or less like a grayish white. It's gonna depend on how uh, how much strength you're going to need. So you might want to play around with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click in here, and then you're going to see I've isolated the uh, outer uh, portion of the subject. Now I need to also isolate this, so I'm going to hold down my shift key and then just click on that, okay? And then also right here you can see that didn't go all the way in. Let me zoom in on that for you so you can see that and move over the image so you can see it. But right here in, inside of that. Now, I'm gonna do that right now, but you could do this after the fact, all right? So I'm just gonna hold the Shift key again, and this is just gonna add a selection, and you can see it filled it right in there. Now what I'm gonna to have to do is unlock this, okay? And the way that you do that is you just double click on that, and you can name this whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it and say okay. Now I can go down here at the bottom of my palette, of my layers palette, and I can go ahead and click this little icon, which is a layer mask. It's adding a layer mask, okay? Now before I do that, let me just look up here. I can see this didn't also get in here, so I'm gonna hold the Shift key again, and I'm gonna do that, and it's gonna bring it in, okay? So then just go back down here, and then just go ahead and click on the layer mask. Now you can see this has happened before to people and they get caught up on this or they get hung up on this. Let me just go back. The reason is because we have to invert it. So depending on what you've worked on previously, that may have already been on invert versus, um, uh, or inverse, I'm sorry, rather than um, the opposite. All right, so let me just go inverse. And then, and all I did there is went to select and then inverse, okay? And then from there, I can go ahead and click on the mask. And now you can see now that we're selecting, we want the background to go away and the stuff inside of the selection to stay. And inverse just means the opposite, all right? So that's that. So we've got a pretty good extraction if we look at this right here. Now you can see this down here. Look at this. This is one little issue. I'm glad that happened because I can show you how we can fix that. See that right there? Um, that there can be filled in very easily now because we have a mask. And what happened was is it just bled inside of there because it's white on white. So all I need to do is make sure that I'm on the layer mask, okay? Not this here. This is the layer itself. This is the layer mask. So just click on that. And then I'm gonna to wanna to choose my black brush. Okay, so just go to your paint uh, brush and then black, and then make sure that my brush is big enough. I'm just hitting the bracket key, or you can go up here, make sure that your hardness is set to whatever you want. I'm gonna leave it at 65%. And then I'm just gonna go, oops, that's gonna take it away. I'm sorry, we gotta to go to white. So let's switch this to white. Black takes away and white adds. All right, there we go. And now I can paint it back in. And all I'm doing is just filling in the layer mask with, uh, with the stuff that is, uh, that is supposed to be there. Okay, so that's just filling in inside of here. Okay, 
So if I went with the black now, I can take it away. If I go with white, I can fill that back in. And all that's doing is telling the mask that I want to uncover or cover whatever I'm selecting. All right, so that's how you do that. That's why it's really nice to work with a layer mask if you can. All right, so now what I want to do is drag this into this. And some people get hung up on this too because these might be nested depending on how you've opened your images. So here what you're going to do is just make sure that this is separate, okay? The two documents are separate, and then you can just drag this into this particular document. Now, you can see that she's quite large. So what we want to do here is, uh, and usually what happens is it'll get dropped on the top layer up here. So let's just pretend that that happened. And then what I want to do is hold the shift key and I'm just going to scale this down, okay? Uh, like this, I'm going to make her even smaller. If you remember in the image, we want this, you know, the kiss is 25 cents to kind of match her size. So there, looks pretty close. And now what you need to do, if you're working with one of our digital backgrounds and props, you want to bring this below the cover-up layer. In this case, is the kissing booth. And I can bring her up now. I can scale her down a little bit more. Um, and then just go ahead and click Apply. And you can see we're pretty much done, other than there's a little bit of cleaning up that I want to show you how to do around this. Uh, now, with the layer mask, which really nice, is I'm able to get rid of this some of this white, okay, around here. And that's a lot of times a problem when you shoot on white is you'll get that that bleed or the, uh, the uh, white halo, as some people call it. But in this case, it's up in the hair a little bit in here, but there's a really cool way, and I've showed this before, but I'm going to show it again on how we can do it, okay? So all I'm going to do is make sure that I'm on the layer mask. I'm going to go to my lasso tool, and I'm, I'm not going to go around the entire image right now because I want to show you uh, different spots because some spots might need it more than others. But let's just say the hair in here and in here, we want to fix that, and maybe just a little bit on the face. So I can just go like this, select what I want. I'll even go down here a little bit. And then up here looks okay, so we'll bring it down into there. Now on the layer mask, I want to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I want to make this, let's go 1.6 pixels, say OK. And now I want to go to my levels, so Image, Adjustments, and then Levels. Or you can use your shortcut. And then from there, you're just going to bring this up until you see the white disappear. Okay, now watch, I'm going to bring it back. And you can see I'm, I'm bringing this out like this, and that's getting rid of the white, okay? And then just click OK, and then we're going to want to deselect, select, deselect. So you can see that's a real easy way. Now, you can see in here the face, I might have gotten that. Maybe we want that little bit of, of wraparound lighting. So let's just undo that. Let's go edit, step back, and step back. And now we're back there. So now let me just deselect that. And let me start over again and not isolate the face. Let's just do the hair. Again, I'm on my layer mask. I come down around here. I'm going to come down into here. And then, well, actually, I probably should go up here a little bit too and back down. And now what I could do, I can even move that out if I want with my arrow or my bracket, or my arrow keys, I'm sorry. And then from there, just do the same thing. I can go image. Well, first off, I'd want to go to Filter and then Gaussian Blur, but I've already blurred that, okay? So let's just Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. And all we're doing is blurring the mask. And then Image, Adjustments, and then Levels. And then from there, we bring this in, and you can see that we're softening and we're getting rid of the white. Then click OK, and then Deselect. And that's it. Okay, and then you'd want to work around your image to see if there's any other spots that you may have missed or that you may want to do. But I like this little bit of white lighting coming onto the skin because it looks more natural. Now up here, you may want to do the same thing. So let's make sure on our layer mask, go up here, bring it around, and then there. And then make sure that we filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And now say okay. 1.6 was the pixels, and now we're going to go select, or mode, adjustments, and then levels, and then from there, we can just bring this up and get rid of that halo, as they call it, and then deselect, and that's pretty much it, and then we have our image, okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it, now the last thing that I would probably do to this, and let me just bring this over so we can see the entire thing, the only thing I would do to this now is flatten it, okay, flatten it down, 
And then from there, I would probably just add a little bit of contrast to it. So I would go image, adjustments, and then contrast, and then add a little bit of contrast to it to give it a little punch, just like that. You can see if I turn it on and off, that's before, that's after. So that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. I just wanted to show you this once again on how to create an image from start to finish and show you how simple it can be, especially if you know the right tools to use and also some of the tips that I've learned over the years that make it really, really easy so you're not pulling your hair out. Now, if you want to learn more about our digital creations and how to join the club, you can just read down below this page and you'll see examples and uh, what others have done and also what the club has to offer. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube or on our blog, for that matter, you can just head over to newportraitbiz.com forward slash club, and that'll take you right to the page that has all the information on it. And once again, I want to say thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really enjoyed making it for you, as I always do. And if you have any questions, let me know. Email me at scott at newportraitbiz.com, and I'll be more than happy to help you out in any way that I can. All right, so thanks a lot. Take care. Talk to you soon.